So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the coatings I'm going to be using. This uh, is the primer I'm going to be using. It's made by Zinzer. It's called Bullseye 123. I've been using this primer for years. Uh, the reason I like it is that it sticks to anything and everything. I mean, it sticks tenaciously. Uh, it's a fantastic primer. Also, it has a built-in stain blocker. So once you put it on the substrate and you've got maybe a little bit of tannins that want to come through, like this area right here, this dark brown, I don't know if that's going to migrate through the paint, but this will certainly lock it in. And we're just going to put one coat of primer on and we're going to apply that with this little mini roller here. Uh, we're going to get the paint on the door with this and then we're going to iron it out with this. This is a quarter inch nap roller and the reason I like using quarter inch nap rollers on flat surfaces is that it's the closest thing you can get to a sprayed on finish. So uh, there's two things. One, you can, you can iron it out really well and two, uh, it makes for a very quick paint job. We're finally ready to paint and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this one last sweep with this chip brush making sure all particulates are off the door prior to us giving it a primer, a primer coat. So this door is really, really quite clean and uh, it really is ready to paint. But there's just a few little clinger honors that I want to get off prior to putting the prime coat on. All right, is I want to make sure that this roller nap doesn't come off and sometimes these rollers uh, kind of fall apart in the paint. So what I like to do is get some masking tape and I like to wrap the tape around the nap of the roller like this. Kind of tight. Okay, and so anyway, make sure that it's on really well and then I just tear it off and you can see there's some lint maybe, I hope the camera catches that, there's some loose fibers that might have gotten caught up in the paint and it's kind of frustrating when you get little fibers mixing them with your paint you have to pick them out with your finger or razor blade so this kind of ensures that that won't happen. Okay, we're ready to paint. We're painting and it's good to have some kind of a plan before painting the door. Like I'm just not going to start here and go up here. I'm going to start, for me, I'm going to work on the molding first and then after that I'm going to work from the top down and I'll explain as I go. I'm going to work the primer into the molding here and Sometimes I'll just use with these little mini rollers, I'll just go straight down like that and just smear the paint into the molding to make sure that I work it in well. Okay. Now, I don't want blobs on the outside here, so I'm just going to kind of iron those out lightly. I don't want blobs in our door. We're going to try to go for what I call an automotive finish. And uh, most of you don't own paint sprayers and there's really no need to use a paint sprayer when you're painting wood. You can get a very nice finish using one of these little mini rollers. I've got my roller tray nearby here. Okay. So again, I'm going to just kind of smear it in. Miters here. Making sure that we get good coverage. Sometimes this molding can be kind of grainy and it's kind of hard to get paint worked in, but anyway, you can really work it in well with these little mini rollers. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm kind of using the this roller, kind of beveling it a bit. Instead of going flat against this, I'm kind of beveling it, making sure that we don't have any like big heavy buildup on the on the sides of the styles here. Nothing on the rails here. 
go up here. Okay, we're going to focus on the panel, make sure that we don't have any thick paint. We want to have the paint applied universally. That's the goal. Okay, so got the molding at the top, got the center done. actually kind of fun. We're focusing on the molding first, working from the top down, focusing, making sure we got the corners covered well. This door is going to be really pretty when it's all done. Okay. Got a little bit of a lint right here, smeared on the paper. Also, it's a good idea when you're done priming the door, maybe uh, if you've got multiple doors you're painting, put the put this roller in a Ziploc bag, um, make sure that it's, it's not going to dry out, and maybe on the Ziploc bag, you, or any bag for that matter, just kind of write primer on it so you know that uh, it's the primer. You don't want to mix up your, your finish roller with your primer roller. I've done that before. It's very frustrating. So you want to keep your paints separated. Okay. Making sure that paint's applied universally. Make sure we don't have any sags on the panel. Okay. Work on the outside here. Alright. So the moldings are all done. Alright, now we're going to start employing this, this big uh, quarter inch nap roller. These rollers don't hold a lot of paint, by the way. And that's kind of why I, I like to use these as what I call <laughs> the iron, maybe. So we're going to apply the paint with our little mini roller. We're going to iron it out with the quarter inch nap roller. So. I guess my goal here is just to get the paint, and they tell them, the fellas I'm painting with, get the paint on the substrate. Okay, let's work on the, the top rail here. Okay. And that's just got a little bit too much, um, it's got too much stipple for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a flat surface. I'm going to use this sawhorse. I want to get most of the paint off this roller. I just wetted it just so if it was dry it would just remove all the paint but I just want this roller to be primed kind of wetted. I don't want to load it with paint. We've already got paint on here. The sole purpose now is to iron this paint on. Okay so don't want a lot of uh, don't want a lot of uh, roller stipple. Okay. So again, we're going to use. Let's just paint the rails first. Okay. You can see when you're going to be doing this with your doors, just how nice these big rollers just lay out the paint. Okay, so we're doing, we're getting the paint on quickly, efficiently, and beautifully. All right. So, if you do want to use a paintbrush, by all means, and that's what your parents or grandparents taught you to use, you've got a mindset that says that paintbrushes do the best job, then I am not going to discourage you. This is just the way that I paint. I think that this works, this method works very well, very fast. And I kind of like efficiency mixed in with good results, so it's just kind of the way I do it. Okay, so we've got the molding done, we've got the rails done. We're going to work from the outside in. So the next thing we're going to do. Work on the styles here. 
probably learning all the parts of the doors. Styles, rails, handles, molding. Okay. Notice I'm never wetting this roller. I'm just using it to iron the paint out, make it nice and uniform. I'm even trying to pay special attention not to cross where the style and the rails intersect. Okay. Where this uh, this quarter inch nap roller really comes in handy is these paneled areas. Just a few swipes and you're done. Occasionally you'll still get a little bit of nap off the roller even though we use masking tape. No worries. Just kind of pick it off with either a razor knife or your fingers. delighted with the results and uh, I think it's kind of fun when you're done with the project anyway that what I like to do is I call it stair time I kind of once the door is hung and place a pour a glass of wine or something like that and just stare at it I do that with any any and all of my projects that take time I'm sure you do the same Apply the paint with a little roller, just get it on the substrate. Now I can see little imperfections here and there, little spots, little kind of tiny little divots that I missed. And again, I I can't stress this enough. There are, there are those that are going to be very fastidious, and most of us fall in the in the middle where if you have a door that was banged up and Card and uh, you, have, you have big chunks taken out of the side and you've built them up with the sculpt wood, it's going to be 99.9% .9 better. And uh, I am really not a huge perfectionist unless I was making a musical instrument, but I know that these doors are going to be banged up by kids in the near future and that. Uh, Doors do take an abuse, so I think that the goal is to get it 99.9% .9 better, and that uh, you should know when to back off the project. But I know there's personalities out there that just want perfection, and and by all means, go for it. You know, like I said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Okay, we got the door primed. And I got some uh, some sanding sponges that are uh, they're fine grade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this door a quick sand, very light, very quick sand. And there's some there's some burrs here and there, especially in the molding that I can see. And I'm just going to go over and just. Try to knock those burrs down a little bit. I'm just gonna sand the field here. Like this. Any little particulate that might have gotten into the paint, 
you can just knock out very quickly with the sanding sponge. This is an optional step. If, uh, if you're fine with the way the door looks, you can just go ahead and paint it. But I like to just make sure there's no little loose pieces of loose wood grain, anything like that. This just takes a minute. And I'm just going to go over it again with a sponge that I've wrung out really well. I don't want it wet. And I'm just making sure that all the dust from our sanding is removed prior to putting our first coat of paint on. Like I did with the primer in the first coat, I'm going to be painting the molding first. I'm using this small mini roller and I don't like the kind with it has the little bead of plastic at the end. Okay, we're going to start with the molding first. I'm just going to get the paint on the molding. Work it in. I'm using the roller in a sideways action and I'm turning it because I want to make sure that the roller's got some paint like that. Okay, and now I'm going to just roll paint into the molding, make sure it's worked in well. There we go. Go around the molding like this. And then I'm going to go around the panel, smoothing the paint out. Looks like I got a little blob there. Smoothing the paint out, making sure everything's uniform, both on the inside of the panel outside of the rail and the styles. Okay, the reason I'm using the roller and not so much the brush is for speed. I want to get this door painted and if I was painting like 16 doors I wouldn't want to just be brushing things out, working the paint in. It's very slow, laborious, and uh, there are just quicker methods of painting and that's why I'm using a roller. Now, I do have a brush close by because these are the problematic areas. You might have paint building up in the corners here and if you're gonna have a problem on the store with the paint, it's gonna be building up the paint and it's gonna be dripping, weeping down these corners of the molding. So just keep an eye on that. The other difficult areas is when you're painting this flat edge of the style and at the edge of the door, you could have a large buildup of paint. So you wanna make sure that that is not happening with your door and that this is all ironed out. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around again, work the paint in the molding Now what I'm doing here too is, it's not it's hard to see, I'm kind of actually, I'm going to do this aggressively, I'm kind of tilting the roller in like this, I'm not holding it flat on the door like that, I'm kind of holding it in a little bit. And the more you paint with the roller, the better you're going to get. So I'm just kind of evening out the paint, making sure that it's applied evenly. Got the molding done. Now I'm going to work on painting the rails. And I'm not using, this is a pretty well sealed door right now. I'm not using a whole lot of paint. So I'm going to just paint all the rails in one fell swoop. Alright, now to make sure that my stipple is going to be low, even, and correct, I'm going to go over 
all the rails with this big roller, the quarter inch nap. I did not dunk in the paint, I just want this roller wet. I don't want it loaded with paint. I've already got the paint on the door. Just gonna keep working it back and forth till everything's perfectly even. And then I'm happy with it. left here are the panels and the styles. We'll have this door painted in no time. I'm just getting the paint on the panels. And then I'm going to iron it out with my big roller. paint the sides of these doors. I'm paying close attention not to get paint on these areas where the hinges are going to be reinstalled. If you build up the paint on these areas, you can actually affect the installation of the door. And sometimes the door has a very tight fit. And if you build up the millage of paint here, then you're going to have a hard time closing your door. And you're going to either have to shave some wood off in this side or dig the paint out of your hinge. So just try not to get paint on the area where the hinges are going to be reinstalled. Alright. Get this side. So this is a, probably a 70 plus year old uh, doorknob and it's kind of unusual compared to today's standards. But anyway, uh, these are threaded and they screw on like this. And so when I reinstall this,
doorknob, it's if you look at the uh, the end here, it's 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 squared. So what happens is is it fits through here, and what you want to do is you want to tighten down these two knobs, and once you get it to where you like it, you want to position these uh, there's these threaded stoppers down here, but you want them facing down so you don't look at them when you're, when you're looking down at the doorknob. But anyway, try to face them down like this, and then when you get the knobs where you like it, uh, you can just screw them in place with the screwdriver, just like this. And that will lock the doorknob into place. I've got this uh, silicone lubricant that I'm going to uh, I'm going to add some lubricant to the store before I install reinstall the hardware. This stuff works wonders, especially if you have like squeaky closet wheels or garage doors or something like that. This is a really good lubricant. Okay. Good to go. I got this at the Home Depot, by the way. Blaster silicone lubricant. All right, I've got both my doorknobs installed and I'm going to crank this tight. There's no wobbling. I'm gonna set my set screw. Tighten it down so it won't move. We're gonna test the action out. And that is way too tight, way too tight. So we're going to back off the set screw, okay? And we're going to go one turn around and reset the screw. And we'll test out our action. You see how both my set screws are facing down? That's what the goal is. Okay, working good, we're done.